Hey guys, Andrew Waters again on uh, part three of the studio tutorials that I'm working on. Um, back again here working on the Jeep Wrangler project. Um, so I've got a couple of chunks here that uh, I figured would probably be an important part uh, for you guys to know that would actually make a pretty decent part for a step three of tutorial. Uh, and what I'm working with here, I've got this chunk which is actually the center console with cup holders. Oh, there we go. You can kind of see it there. And then this other chunk, which sits right in front of it, which is the uh, shifters for like the transfer case. And um, these two pieces right here, when they go on the model, they interlock together just like that. And you can kind of see it's a pretty tight fit in between these um, kind of quarter round pieces and the shift uh, control parts. So I wanted to go through that a little bit briefly in the studio program and do a tutorial on that so that you guys can maybe see exactly how that lays out. Now you'll see right here what I've already gotten done is I've put in... Um, the floor panel down here and some of the interior pieces uh, on the normal Jeep. This would be like carpet. Um, but basically what I'm working on, I've got this um, chunk of the center console. And the thing that I ran into that I wanted to kind of point out is that when I build these models, I put them all together in hard version first, and then I come back through and basically tear chunks of stuff apart and then go through piece by piece and figure out what goes where and what needs to be in the proper order. And I ran into something that I thought you guys might be interested in looking at. So in the original model, putting in this center console piece that I've got right there in the center of the screen there. Uh, it goes right into the middle of the project, and it's kind of a, kind of a tall piece, so I wanted to make sure and get it in early into the build, because once the dash and everything starts going back in there, um, it's kind of tough to get this chunk in. But what I ran into is this piece technically needs to go in first, and so rather than trying to go back and redo this whole center console chunk, I'll kind of walk you through the steps of uh, what I did to deal with it. Okay, so we're coming along here in the build. And I want to start out... Let's start out in step 41. So this is halfway through the center console build right here. Um, as we come in and we start adding steps, you can see that step 42 puts us in with a little bit of snot right here with a Technic brick that makes the cup holder. And then there's the slope piece right here. Uh, step 43 is going to put the top part, the, um, the lid of our center console. And then it puts the uh, quarter round pieces right here, just kind of the front of the console that faces towards uh, the dash of the Jeep. Then once you come down and you start working the step 44, 45, 46, these are all pieces that are going to give some structural rigidity to the front of the Jeep. And then I started working into step 47, and it started to dawn on me, this little gap right here between these 2x4s and these quarter rounds was going to become an issue. Okay, so for step 48... What I want to do is I want to put in these two modified 1x2 with a stud in the center. Now, clearly, when you go back through, yes, you can take off this little cup holder piece. You can take out the entire center console. But when I'm trying to um, convey to somebody that has purchased these instructions what they're supposed to do, I don't want them to have to keep going back and taking part of the project apart uh, in order to get things to work in. So what I'm going to come in and do is I'm going to find out where these quarter round pieces are and I'm going to take that step and move it to the place after where these modified uh, plates are at. So I'm just going to click on one of those and it'll take me up to step 43 here, which tells me that step is where these uh, were originally laid in. So I'm going to take that step and I'm going to move it all the way down here under step 48. So then it becomes step 48. 
And then I'm going to go back a few steps and just kind of verify that the process went into place correctly. So we started back uh, at step 43. Here's step 44. 45. Yep, that looks like it's going in right. 47. Okay, now here's our modified plates. And we still have enough of a gap to get those in underneath the Technic brick right here. There's a gap here. And it'll allow us to sneak those in under that Technic brick and we don't have to take too much apart to get there. And then step 48, I can still get those two in there as well. Okay, yes, they probably will go back through and they're smart enough to figure this process out. But for the ease of the instructions, I wanted to make sure and point that out because sometimes the order that things go uh, into the project is not always the best way for somebody to read the instructions. And that's kind of important when you're making your own instructions for somebody later on. I'm going to proceed through a few more steps of this build because there's a couple pieces in here that are pretty important uh, for the tutorial purposes. Uh, so for step 49, one of the things that I've got on this um, module that we're about to put in right here is I've got a horn and I've got, already got it pulled up under the animal section. And I, I know that you guys can't see this drop down box over here because that's where the video is but it shows animal close to the bottom and I've clicked on that and there's a little barb claw horn piece that I want to use for my transfer case piece so I'm gonna uh, go ahead and move this around I want it to be kind of facing me so that when I press the up arrow no, that's not going to work. We're going to try it this way. There it goes. Okay, so you kind of, when, you, when you're when you at like a funky angle to the project, sometimes these tiny pieces like this don't always want to like work with you when you move them around. Um, from here, I'm just going to go ahead and press right once, and that'll be at the right angle that I want it to go in. And as you can see, it popped right into the middle of the stud on this modified plate. So that's where I'm going to put it, is right there. And if I want to see if that's actually interfering at all, if I'm just doing this digitally without having the hard copy, I can press collision, which you see up here, and it will actually show me invisibly. Okay, let me explain that. When you have a collision between two pieces inside one of these builds, it will turn them both invisible. Okay, so if I have an axle that's going into a brick and it shouldn't be, I want to be able to see that as a instruction builder. So having collision turned on is a good piece to make sure that your pieces are aligned, especially when it comes to Technic. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn the collision back off because I don't see an issue there. Okay. And then I'm going to go into rod, shrink this down a little bit. Okay, you can see rod right here, right there. And I want to find this little tiny antenna piece with the bar on it. And that's in the rod section. And you can see it down here right at the bottom of the rod is the lever small base. I'm going to click and grab that, and I'm going to put it in place. And if you guys can't see that, I'll zoom in for you. It just clicked into place. And remember right now, it's going to be either um, one angle or the other, whether it's going directly to the front or directly to the side. And we can modify that angle here in just a minute, which is what we're going to do. I want to take in the small lever and put that in place. And now what I'm going to go back and do is I'm going to change the angle of the way that that actually sits inside the center console. Okay, so I've got us down here on step 49, and I'm going to click on the base of this. And it's going to bring up like a little minifigure hand looking uh, icon. And once you put your cursor over that, it'll come up with two other icons. The one we're concerned about right now is this uh, kind of a looped circle icon. We're going to go ahead and click on that. 
and it'll bring up two more smaller icons right here. I want to make sure and grab the correct icon because basically what this is describing is I have two hinge points on this build. Either I've got the hinge point at the lever itself, or I've got the hinge point here at the base. Okay, so like in the real piece, you can take this, move the lever down, and you can turn it back and forth to adjust the angle like that. Well, we're going to do the exact same thing in Studio, and we're going to use their functions to do it. So what I'm going to do, since I know I don't want to mess with the hinge uh, pivot point, okay, is we're going to come back in here and we're going to mess with the bottom one, which is actually the base. We're going to turn the base. Okay, it's going to come up with this little arrow back and forth right here, which means it's going to turn it laterally uh, around the stud. We're going to do that, and then it actually gives me the degree increments. I can go all the way to 360 degrees and do a full rotation if I wanted to. But if, for example, I wanted to set um, a hinge like um, on a windshield, if I'm using hinges for a windshield and I want to set that hinge at the exact angle that I know that that hinge is set at on the real vehicle, I can do it in real time with this incremental uh, measurement that I've got here in studio. For the sake of conversation here, what I'm going to do, and that movement, by the way, was holding spacebar and then left click and hold on my mouse. I can kind of drag the project around and it won't take away from the function that I've got set up. So I'm going to press and hold left key, uh, left mouse button on the red line, and it's actually going to give me the option to change the angle of this lever to however I want it. Okay, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to set it just about, I don't know, 20 degrees off. That seems pretty reasonable right there. Okay. I'm going to click outside of this area, which will turn off the function, and my, my lever and my rod are now set at the correct angle. Now say, for example, I actually want to turn my project, and I want to move that lever down. The user can do so if they want to, but for the purposes of instructions, I want them to see that this lever is not straight up and down, that it's actually angled. So we're going to do the exact same function, but we're going to use it on the lever itself and not the base. So instead of doing the base, we're just activating the lever function. Here's the small hand with the rotational symbol again, and this time it only gives me one point of reference uh, which is the joint, which is where that yellow box is. I'm going to go ahead and press the arrow button here. Going to give it a little bit of an angle. Okay, we're going to go at an excessive angle just so I can show you what the collision function is like. See how this kind of goes through the quarter round right here? You can kind of see it if I zoom in. If I have a collision between two parts inside my project and I activate the collision uh, mechanism, it's going to show me that there's an interference right there. So what I need to come back and do is I need to click on this part, the rod itself, the lever, and I'm going to adjust this. So let's put it about a 20 degree angle and kick out of there. And you can see that now they're both uh, back to a solid state color. So now uh, the collision is gone, the interference is gone, and we can proceed forward with our mock. That's all that I really wanted to show you guys tonight. Um, I know it's kind of a small little piece here, but it's a pretty important one, especially when you're uh, working with the collision function and uh, being able to turn some of these parts and pieces in here. Uh, for example, also, if I wanted to like turn this little lever uh, the little claw, it gonna, it's going to give me the same function right here, okay? Because it's not going to be a 90 degree angle. Anyway, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to comment, like me on Facebook, Andrew Waters 9406, and I will continue as the build goes through and I find other pieces of interest to show you guys. I'll make sure and post videos about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will catch you next time.